to start off this video by just saying thank you to everybody who's been watching all my videos over the past couple of months. Um, if you'd like to help out the channel and help me grow it, can you just take a moment just to scroll down and hit that little subscribe button, um, as this will increase, obviously increase my subscribership and grow the channel, and it'll be a massive help to me. So we're now into November, and that means it's time to look back at October and have a look at how our so my solar panels and battery system has been working, how much we I've managed to generate, how much um, I've managed to use myself, how much I've exported, and ultimately how much I've saved and is this still in line with my predictions of the payback period which you'll see in one of my other videos and I'll put a little link up to it here and there will be a link down below. Before we get into the data just a quick heads up of what's going to be coming up on the channel over November. So on Wednesdays I'm going to continue uh, releasing my maths videos Currently I'm in, middle, in the middle of a series on shapes, looking at areas, angles and how to calculate uh, emphasites. So if you're key stage 3 to A level that might be of use to you. Also remember if you are have got a, um, a child and you want private tutoring, if you're lucky enough to live in Swansea I do do private tutoring in person. Or if you're not in Swansea I can do online, just drop me a message if you're interested. On Mondays I'm going to be continuing my science videos looking at uh, the science between behind solar panels, solar energy, batteries etc. So back in October I've uh, released a couple of videos looking at the units that are commonly associated with this uh, type of uh, power system, so watts, kilowatts, amps, volts, all that sort of stuff, kilowatt hours, and also a video about how solar panels work and again I'll put the video links up above and if you're watching on a mobile phone I know those links don't always appear so I'll put them down in the description below and uh, through November I'm going to be releasing videos looking at how inverters work and how batteries work. Anyway that's enough uh, waffling and self advertisement time to actually look at the data um, from October October has been a bit of a mixed month. It's, some days have been very, very cloudy. So how has this affected the, our solar generation? And this is what this graph is showing. It breaks it down day by day. You can see that on the best day, we had over 25 kilowatt hours of generation. Unfortunately, that's been countered by a few uh, bad days where we've had less than two. The lowest we've had so far is 1.8 kilowatt hours of generation. As you see from the graph, it's a bit hit and miss it's all over the place. I can't really even draw an average line to show what the average is because it's so variable. It wouldn't actually mean very much. But it looks like it, the um, amount the sort of amount that often gets produced is above or around that ten kilowatt hours, which is more than enough for us to power our house and use that on a daily basis. How is this actually? Well, actually, before I get to that, the amount of uh, solar power we have generated in October is 347.1 kilowatt hours. Um, that compares to 428 in September. So we are 80 kilowatt hours down, which I suppose is to be expected. The days are drawing in, we're getting less sunlight, and October going into the autumn months are often more overcast and cloudy. Next up, the uh, graph that shows the breakdown of how we used our power. So the blue is how much we export back to the grid e each day, so that's our excess. Our red is the real import, so that's how much we're importing each day. Uh, the yellow is uh, the battery discharge, so that's how much power or energy we are using from our battery each day. And the green is what we call the self-use, so that is power being produced or energy being produced on the roof and being used instantaneously in the house. So if we have a sunny lunchtime and we're cooking dinner, that's the power from that, maybe uh, supplemented a bit from the battery. Most of the time though, the power goes into the or the energy goes into the battery, charges that, and then we use it as uh, we need to. As you can see, 
it's been a bit of a mixed month. There's been days where we've had a, quite a bit of export and there's been other days where there's been no export. Pretty much every day there has been a little bit of import and on the 22nd there was a, a lot of import. Um, these import days have actually um, coincided when we've had guests over and we've done a lot of cooking and things like that and also happened to co um, coincide with quite cloudy days so we didn't have much solar generation to actually charge the battery so that what that we found what's happened there also what we found is when there's been a particularly cloudy day we've been relying on the battery but then it obviously doesn't get charged and then the next day we have a lot more uh, import from the grid our, self, um, our battery discharge in yellow is pretty much consistent for each day we normally get about three or four kilowatt hours of discharge per day Again, that makes sense. We use about two kilowatt hours through the night, so obviously no solar generation there. And then just throughout the day, we are using that sort of energy um, just um, as the uh, solar energy isn't consistent um, in October. And the self-use, um, again, is quite small. Um, normally only up to about two and a half kilowatt hours per day, and quite often a bit less than that. Again, as this really shows that we haven't quite got our lifestyles set yet so that we can use the pure solar. We are still relying on it, charging the battery and using it from that. So the big question is, how much has we uh, have we actually uh, generated in self-use? So, as I said, um, we've generated 347.1 kilowatt hours in October and this is about 80 kilowatt hours down on September. The amount of power that we have or amount of energy we have used uh, or, um, which has been created by our solar array is 180 kilowatt hours which is pretty much exactly the same as September which was uh, 179.2. We should also point out that September October does have an extra day, so these uh, values will be a, bit, a little bit skewed, skewed if you are trying to do a direct comparison between September and October, but you know it's pretty close, it gives a good average for the month. This month we imported 29 kilowatt hours, and that compared to September where we imported 12 kilowatt hours. And again, I'm assuming that's um, purely based on the changes in the weather and also those days when we had people over and we were using more. Also in September we were away for a couple of days so that might be um, the reasons for that. Um, this month I've also got a new sort of way of analysing this where I'm looking at ha um, how um, self-sufficient we are and I've put this in a percentage term. So in October we were 87% self-efficient uh, in terms of electricity, i.e. that means out of all the electricity we used we imported 13% and we self-generated 87%. Again if you look, look, look back to my payback calculation videos that's where I'm getting these values for where I'm looking at the 80% to 90% of the self-use or um, self-generation use. Comparing that back to September where there's obviously a lot more sun and we weren't here we um we were eighty five no eighty four percent efficient then, and we imported six percent of our total electricity use. So in October we have taken a bit more of a hit there. The question is how much has that actually impacted on our financial uh, situation? So we would have uh, the amount that we actually use at one hundred and eighty uh, kilowatt hours that if we were paying for it at our current rate of nine, just over 19p would have cost us £35.29 which is um, a decent saving. Um, again comparing that to September we've actually saved a little bit more but then we have that, did have that extra day. In September we saved uh, £35.09 £35 so we 20p extra saving. However, because of that extra import, we gave a bit more money to British Gas this month. So this month we um, have given British Gas 
this is excluding the stand in charge, £5.27, and that compared to £2.30 last month. Also this month I've sorted out my SEG payment, it did take a bit of time to sort out, and it's actually still technically not in place, but um, so Energy were having so much problems with um, Western Power, which is our DNO, that they are actually backdating it um, to the middle of the month, um, while they get all the paperwork sorted, because they, um, the DNO wanted a very obscure form. However, as if you look back at this graph, we didn't have much um, export from when this actually kicked in, and it was probably around the 19th of October this kicked in. Um, but it does mean we've made £1.65 back in SEG payments uh, this month, which takes our overall, I suppose, money saving or total money in from the solar panels in October to £36.94. So since having the panels installed on the 24th of August, how much money has been made and how much money has been saved? So we have spent just under £8 on import over that two full months and a week. It's actually £7.99. We have a total solar generation of 918 kilowatt hours, so we're nearly at that megawatt hour and we'll probably tick over to that in September. Hopefully we'll set to, take over to that in, uh, sorry, in September, in uh, November. Um, the amount we've saved, so the amount we're not paying to British Gas, is um, £78.83. And, pence. Um, and as I say, we've now got a total seg payment of £1.65, which means that the total money that our solar panels have generated for us is £80.48. And and that's working out at £1.17 a day. So that's a little bit lower than what we were expecting. We were expecting about uh, £1.50 a day, but I'd say the web, that number has been really been hit by the uh, cloudy few days we've had at the end of October. So that number will, will fluctuate and we probably need a good year's worth of data to actually get a realistic value of that. Anyway, um, as I say, thank you for watching. If you can hit that subscribe button, please do. And I hopefully see you in another video soon. Uh, keep an eye out on the channel. If you hit the bell notification icon, you will get notifications every time I upload a video. And take care, and I will see you again soon.